Hi, how are you doing today? Thanks for joining me again here. In this video today, what we're going to take a look at is the sequence of operation in an efficient forced air fired furnace. Previously, we looked at sequence of operation in a basic. This one's going to differ as we start to add new components in our efficient system. Um, I'm not going to run through a schematic on this one because it's quite detailed. I don't have the space on the board. I'm just going to kind of jot it down in point form. Hopefully this helps. So again, because we're looking at a closed loop style system, we are going to start off in the same place. We are going to start off with the room cools. Okay. As the room starts to cool, our thermostat, which is a normally closed, it would be normally oh, or not or normally open. It would be open in a warm room. As the room starts to cool, that thermostat would close. Okay. Now, as the thermostat closes, the first thing that's going to energize in an efficient system is going to be our combustion air blower. So our combustion air blower energized. The purpose of our combustion air blower is to move those products of combustion across our burners, but it's also, it does a pre-purge where it removes any products of combustion or old gas that might be present in the heat exchanger or the flue itself. Prevents things like explosion. So our cab is energized. Once our combustion air blower is energized, it creates a negative pressure and our air proof switch closes. That sends a signal back to our electronic control board, which then says it's safe to now start the ignition sequence. Okay? It's just a safety precaution to ensure that all of those old products of combustion have been removed and we have fresh products of combustion near the burner area. So airproof switch closes. The next thing that we're going to see happen is the ignition sequence begins. Now, depending on the type of ignition that we're looking at, if we're looking at a direct spark or a DSI, the first thing that's going to energize, actually both things that energize at the exact same time, our main gas valve opens because it's energized and our spark happens at the same time. Okay, So that as that gas is released, it's being exposed to the spark from our direct spark across those two points of contact. If we're looking at an HSI or a hot surface ignition, okay, depending on whether or not we're looking at a intermittent or just a hot surface ignition, uh, the first thing that is actually energized is going to be that hot surface element, which is going to be allowed to start to get really, really warm. It starts to glow. And then after a certain amount of time, then the gas is released. So in an HSI, element energized first, then the main gas valve opens after a predetermined amount of time exposing that gas to that superheated element. Both of these, the end result obviously, we are going to see our, actually I'm going to write it up here. We are going to see burners ignite. Okay, I'm just going to put these in a little box here. Okay, so burners ignite, and once the burners ignite, we have what's called flame proving, which in our basic, we had our standing pilot, which was always constantly proving flame. In our efficient, one of the things that makes it efficient is the removal of that standing pilot. Uh, we use a flame rod for flame proving once it's been established that there is indeed a flame at the burners. The flame proving then sends a signal back to the electronic control board telling it that it's okay to shut off the ignition sequence. So, ignition, de-energized. Once the ignition is de-energized, a timer starts in the electronic control board to allow time for the heat exchangers to warm up, for the plenum to warm up. As I mentioned previously in a previous video, our heat exchanger would reach a predetermined temperature to turn the fan on. Now we're using a predetermined time to turn the fan on, usually around 45 seconds then we see the fan on. And I'm going to write 45 seconds right here. Okay, now that the fan is on, again, it's drawing air from the cold air returns. It's pushing it through the heat exchanger where it's exposed to those uh, heat exchangers. That heat energy is naturally transferred out into the warm air, into the air to be warmed, and it's pushed out into the space. Once that air reaches out into the space, it starts to warm up the room. Uh, and again, it's going to reach our thermostat. And because it opens on a temperature rise, as our room warms, our thermostat opens.
Once our thermostat opens, the shutdown procedure begins. The first thing that de-energizes, obviously, if the thermostat is open, let's get rid of the gas. Main gas valve closes, which shuts the gas off completely. Okay? The next thing that de-energizes is our combustion air blower does what's called a post purge. Again, let's get rid of all that old or leftover gas or anything like that that could be present inside that heat exchanger. So, our combustion air blower de-energize. Okay, shuts off. And the last thing that de-energizes is our indoor fan motor. Okay, so as you can see, closed loop system again. Once our indoor fan motor de-energizes, our system is back in a dormant state, ready for the temperature to start dropping again. The room would naturally cool. And after that, we would see our system begin all over again. Hopefully this has helped. Again, troubleshooting becomes a whole lot easier when we understand the sequence of operation. If something is not happening within this sequence that we know should, it gives us a starting place. Uh, hopefully this has helped and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.